The development of filmmaking was an innovation for photographers, filmmakers, and audiences alike. It impacted the world, giving people a leisure activity, creating an industry for millions of people, developing innovative forms of technology, and informing people with a visual medium. Entertaining and informing the masses around the world, it is a medium constantly evolving. Invented in the 1650s and up through the 19th century, the magic lantern led the way for the modern projector. It was used to tell stories, entertain, and inform audiences by projecting still pictures. In 1822, the first heliograph or photograph was taken, but it wasn't until 1839 that it was possible to permanently print a photograph. Due to this innovation, photography became a new profession. In 1872, British inventor Edward J. Muybridge modified the magic lantern so it would be possible to project moving objects onto a screen. Muybridge named the projector the Zupraxiscope. The first projection was the result of a debate between the governor of California and a racehorse owner. The projection was to show whether the horse's hooves left the ground when it galloped. The three men were astonished at the animated galloping horse on the screen. Muybridge discovered persistence of vision, a principle stating if still images are shown in fast succession, the human mind would perceive them as moving. This discovery caught the attention of the press, expanding his audience. As a result, the Lumiere brothers from France took notice of Muybridge's idea. Along with ideas from Thomas Edison's kinetoscope, the Lumiere brothers created their own motion pictures. Their innovations are the foundation of our current motion pictures. On December 18, 1895, Auguste and Louis Lumiere presented their first public motion picture screening in the Grand Café Lounge in Paris. The device they used was called La Cinematography, which was a projector, camera, and printer all in one. They presented a group of 10 films they had made, lasting 20 minutes. 35 people were present at the screening. In those 20 minutes, the audience was astonished as they watched a motion picture never before seen. Three films included in the screening were Demolition of a Wall, a film played forwards and backwards, The Sprinkler Sprinkled, the first comedy film, and Arrival of a Train at Le Ciotat, which frightened audiences by making them believe the train was going to come out of the screen. These films were eventually seen all over the world. They started to understand what kind of impact moving images were going to have on people. And so they did things like they set the camera up really, really close to where the train was going to come because they knew it would have a, a strong impact on the audience. The Lumiere brothers went on to create over 1,400 short motion pictures, inspiring future filmmakers. A modern day filmmaker, Nick Rigobuto, said, Story is what drives us as filmmakers. But the fact is, the Lumiers weren't storytellers, they were innovators. Shortly after the Lumiere brothers' films were released, eager filmmakers wanted to follow in their footsteps. One of these filmmakers was Edwin Porter. He worked in Thomas Edison's laboratory as a director for films made with Edison's kinetoscope. Edison realized he could make more money showing his films to large audiences using a projector rather than his kinetoscope, which could only be used by one person at a time. He opened up his own movie theaters and assigned Porter to make longer films for him. Porter then started making five-minute versions of classic stories like Jack and the Beanstalk. These were some of the first narrative movies. Porter later decided to make his own films and left the Edison company. Porter made more successful films, such as the action-packed The Great Train Robbery. At the end of the film, the lead actor, Justice D. Barnes, shoots a gun at the audience. This became a famous moment in motion picture history. The Great Train Robbery is pretty famous as the first uh, Western film and setting up the Western genre was really important to American films because in a lot of ways uh, Westerns sort of embody the American spirit and the whole idea of sort of pushing West um, has sparked um, American imagination. The Great Train Robbery amused audiences around the U.S. and Europe, exciting future filmmakers with its creative camera movements, which had not been seen in a motion picture. The film was very popular in the first movie houses, which were called Nickelodeons. People could see his film for less than 10 cents. Around the same time, Georges Millet from France started to incorporate the first special effects into motion pictures. His most famous film, La Voyage de la Lune, was an innovation for film at the time and contained detailed sets and amazing special effects. 
His film attracted more people to the motion picture medium. In 1915, filmmaker D.W. Griffith released his film, The Birth of a Nation. In his film, he expressed his feelings on politics and his position on African Americans. Certain people who watched the film described it as being extremely racist, and groups such as the NAACP wrote complaints expressing their feelings on the film. Racism escalated in 1919, and some say the birth of a nation had an impact. In the 1840s, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote a novel called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Many people think it started the Civil War because it was an anti-slavery book, and it was about um, a family being destroyed, people being sold to horrible owners, and so on. The result, well, one result of that, which is, there are accounts of this, it was made into a play, and performed all over the, the North, and people, recount seeing adult white human beings sitting in theaters weeping at the plight of an African-American human being depicted on stage. It was so powerful that Abraham Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe and he said, so you're the little lady who started all of this. It created a paradigm for at least people in the North, for white people in the North, to think about what was going on with black human beings in this country. In 1915, D.W. Griffith made the film The Birth of a Nation, which completely reversed that earlier paradigm and gave us a legacy of race hatred and scorn and fear that you can still hear echoed today. By the 1920s, cinematographers and inventors made both live action and animated motion pictures. However, sound still couldn't be synchronized with the film. As a result, inventors worked hard throughout the early 1920s on this problem. In 1926, Warner Brothers Pictures released Don Juan, the first feature film with the Viaphone sound effects and a musical soundtrack. However, talking still wasn't part of the motion picture. A year later, in 1927, the film The Jazz Singer was released starring Al Jolson, a famous singer, actor, and comedian. It was the first live action movie that had film synchronized with the dialogue, sound, effects, and music. This astonished and impacted people as they saw and heard for the first time sound in a film. The first line of the movie was, Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you. It became the highest grossing motion picture of the year and was wildly popular in the United States. The jazz singer set in motion the talkies. It created a whole new kind of movie experience. During silent films, audience members could talk during the movies, discussing their opinion. But when more talkies were made, audiences made a change, listening to the dialogue and paying more attention to the movies. While the talkies were a great innovation for film, Performers and plays started to lose their jobs because of the popularity of sound and motion pictures. In 1929, Walt Disney released Steamboat Willie. This was the first animated motion picture to have synchronized sound with dialogue, sound effects, and music. It amused audiences with a new type of motion picture entertainment. Motion pictures started becoming very popular all around the world. Audiences would go to see movies on a regular basis, which fueled this new phenomenon. Hollywood started becoming very successful which created many new jobs. Surprisingly, more people started to see movies helping both Hollywood and the audience's morale. Movies played a valuable psychological and ideological role during the Great Depression. They gave people hope and reassurance by portraying the country back up on its feet. From the 1920s through the 50s, many historic films were made, such as Nosferatu, King Kong, Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz, Casablanca, and singing in the rain. The look of films over time changed with the technology. Motion pictures have created a billion dollar industry, making films one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the world. Over the years, blockbuster films have been grossing high returns. For example, the major motion picture Avatar recently grossed $77 million in its first week. 
Overall, Avatar has made over $2.5 billion worldwide, showing the large impact movies have made on the public, not only financially, but emotionally, by teaching lessons about how we should treat others. Modern day innovator George Lucas in 1975 changed the technical side of motion pictures, advancing special effects and enhancing sound for an improved movie watching experience. His two major companies, Industrial Light and & Magic and THX, are innovative industries. Documentaries have also been attracting large audiences and have become a lot more common in the last 20 years. They shine a light on issues audiences might not have seen. These and other films are watched at movie theaters, watching them at home or even watching them on mobile devices such as laptops and phones. The internet, being a worldwide network, makes it possible to download movies or watch them instantly on your computer. As technology of movie viewing has progressed, so have the economic returns for the industry. This is further job creation throughout the industry, from the independent low-budget film to the Hollywood blockbuster. Even more innovations have been made for viewing motion pictures, such as Blu-ray, which ensures cleaner and more visually detailed movies. 3D is another huge innovation, bringing the audience further into the story. As easy as it is today for people to watch movies, it's almost as easy to make them. Now with digital technology being cheap and easy to work with, it's simpler than ever to create your own motion pictures. Earlier in his career, George Lucas explained, Someday every 10-year-old child will be able to buy a kit and shoot a movie. Think what this will do to our civilization. Movies will replace the pen. Everybody's going to be making movies. Um, it's also, you know, made two generations of young people um, starry-eyed about the movies. His words have come true. Film and film technology has evolved dramatically with the innovation after innovation. It has visually brought audiences to the moon and back, and it has captured history throughout the 20th century for us to use today and into the future. The cinema is possibly the most relevant art form um, that we have in contemporary life because in a lot of ways it incorporates all other art forms. Innovations in cinema will always be a colossal part of the human experience and will continue to change and impact our lives in an intellectual and emotional way, ceaselessly saving precious memories and stories that will last forever.